Hey everyone, the 6.5 is on the road here at Madison Square Park in New York City at the US Open IBM activation. What a week, the US Open's been going on here outside the city in Flushing, but here in the city in Madison Square Park, there is a big event today, IBM partnering with US Open to bring the tennis experience here in the park. Excited to have a conversation today, not just about the US Open and the work that IBM is doing technologically alongside with the USTA and the Open, but also to talk a little bit about the company's data and AI strategy. Joined by Ritika Gunner. Great to see you, Great Ritika. to see you, Dan. Thanks for joining me here. It's, uh, um, it's, it's amazing to be here today. And look, what, a, what an amazing activation place that we have in Madison Square today. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. You know, last night, by the way, I went to the match. I, I got to see a couple of different matches. You know, I, I left right when Sinner's match started. And, um, but what, by the way, so interesting to watch the different strategy, the women's game, seeing one of the top women's game and seeing the men's game. Women play with so much finesse. The men play with so much power. It's pretty, seems very typical, but they were both just really entertaining. The energy there was great. Um, you've been around and at the park, uh, at, at the U S open event. I think you told me a few times. I mean, talk a little bit about the act, uh, the activation here, the U S open and the partnership with IBM. Yeah, well, when you look at the U.S. Open and the many years that IBM has been doing um, do, doing doing the technology aspects with the U.S. Open, um, we really this year extended what we were doing with the U.S. Open to provide a lot more of a generative AI experience. So, for those of you who use the app, um, you would have seen that you have things like Match Chat, where you can actually chat and interact. Yeah. and ask questions about the U.S. Open, the players, the matches. Um, you can do things like have a play-by-play -play where you have conversational AI really generating insights for you or the real-time match insights where during the actual play, you can see how AI is making um, predictions on who the winner is in real time. So all of these things were newly added this year using a lot of the generative AI technologies. And you can kind of think of that as a tennis coach for those who may be novice tennis fans or who are really deep experts in it and just really want to understand the statistics. All of this powered by our IBM technology, Granite Models underneath, um, IBM Watson Orchestrate underneath as well. And so this has really been a culmination of just taking technology and further giving a very hyper-personalized experience to the fans. Yeah, and you're bringing a lot of that to, to a number of different sports. You're doing it with tennis, you're doing it with golf, you're doing it with uh, uh, racing. Racing um, and, and UFC. And by the way, very interesting, uh, I think it was at Mobile World or maybe it was at South By, I got to play a table tennis match yes. and I got to do the, the tracker and, and I was favored to win. I, I was dominating the table at South, uh, at South By. So I just want to point that out. Very good table tennis player here. That's important, what about, right? does it translate to tennis? Is it the does question. not, it does not. I, I, I'm the guy that thinks I'm playing baseball. You know, I'm trying to just keep it inside the little fence when we play, but, but I do love the sport. I love to watch any sport. I like watching athletes compete and this was great. And then of course it was fun, like in the Osaka match, which is one of the matches that we, we watched last night, um, to see that the, the win percentages change. Like after every shot, you could sort of see it was changing. And there was a point where she had a big advantage. And then, you know, there was a little bit of a comeback. They went to like six, six in the last, uh, Set and That's all of a sudden they started to show the odds were changing. And by the way, you could watch the players and their body languages were changing. Like the data was changing. You'd see the confidence coming in and out. It was, it was really cool to kind of see all that. Definitely. So talk to me a little bit. Let's 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 talk a little bit about um, Watson X. You know, this is this is your baby. Um, you know, it's helping in sports, but let's let's well, let's be real. The opportunity in the enterprise is probably exponentially larger for what all this technology can do. And, and I've been one of the people that's been on the record saying, you know, IBM got generative AI in market for enterprises very early. Watson AI, Watson data, Watson governance, hit it all on the, on the you know, but how are you seeing now? Because we still see it as very early with enterprises. So how are you sort of seeing the technology really helping unlock the opportunity for AI in the enterprise? Yeah, I want you to think about what we have at the US Open as a small microcosm of what most enterprises are going through. You have um, real-time insights that you need to be able to generate. You have a digital experience that you need to be able to drive. And you want to be able to leverage all the vast amounts of data. Think of all the data points um, throughout any one of the matches that you have to deal with. So you have all different types of data, large volume of data. You want, you want, you want those insights in real time 
And you need that in a very digital experience. This is no different than most enterprises have as well. And, and what we're seeing is that most organizations need to be able to have the same kind of capabilities applied to the enterprise with the right security, the right governance kind of capabilities. And what we're seeing is even as organizations move from like piloting um, these Gen AI techniques to moving them in production, these same kind of experiences that the US Open has done from pilot to production are the same kind of things that we see a lot of our clients do. And we see that the generative AI phase of experimentation is almost ending, and we see a lot of it actually moving into production in the enterprise. Yeah, that's a really important point that you bring up. You know, there's been some studies as of late that have, oh, yeah. you saw the MIT study come ones. out, and it kind of comes out, and, well, I think it is super controversial. And, 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 you know, I think, as I was kind of sharing with you as we were talking ahead of this thing, is like, I think the technolo technologically we're advancing very quickly. Mm. The tech can be developed. I think the people inside of enterprises need a lot of help. And I think that's one of the areas where IBM has been so uniquely fit is because you have the technology on the Watson side, your baby. You have the consulting side, right. which can actually help with the with the strategy and delivery. Because a lot of companies, people are still kind of dealing with that. How certain am I about this? Uh, is this thing helping me do my job better or is, is this going to replace me in, in my job? And I think what we're finding is working with AI makes people exponentially more productive. But that risk is still kind of, you're, it's like all transformations that have come in the past. People just, they have to adapt. And this one, Ritika, has been so fast. And that actually makes me want to talk about agents. Because mm. like first you had generative tools. Like, okay, great. We can, you know, generate uh, text. You can generate images. You can generate video and do all kinds of interesting things for, for the enterprise. But agents are the next level, right? You can orchestrate an entire workflow. Now you have AI talking to AI talking to AI that can take a process in ERP or a process in CRM and move it through multiple phases. And you guys are working on that. Talk a little bit about kind of what you're doing with Agentic, because that seems like what's really going to take enterprise from proof of concept to full implementation is when all these workflows connect. Yeah, I think the big thing with Agentic is you're moving from AI that can generate to AI that can do for you. And this big transformation from generation, creation to to AI that can do for you is going to be transformational for the industry because it means workflows that were deterministic in nature or that had humans in the loop can now be done in ways in which you can have the AI create the plan, execute the plan, and actually reflect on it as well. And this is probably one of the biggest transformational things that will happen, I believe, um, in, in this next decade in generative AI and in AI specifically. So when we think about how agents are gonna disrupt, um, you still have to think about the outcomes. Just going back to the previous discussion we had, this is about not just a technological transformation, but you're teaching organizations how to drive these workflows in a new way and how to execute them in a, a, a way where you are talking about changes in how the organization behaves. So it's a cultural change, which I see in every organization. It is a process change and it is the technology. And we within IBM have taken a lot of this technology and implemented ourselves in a lot of the back office areas uh, for AI productivity with sales as an example, human resources as an example, procurement to be able to automate a lot of the workflows using agentic technologies. Yeah, it was, it was interesting what you say. You said something about, you know, the AI can kind of reflect on itself. You know, I, I use the almost idea that can iterate exactly. on, on what it's doing, which is really, it's really interesting because the system becomes an intelligent partner, right? And we kind of heard this, like it becomes your assistant in the boardroom, it becomes your, but like the ability for it to actually go out and reflect and say, we can do this better. And by the way, again, enabling humans to focus on higher levels, things that require more empathy, things that compute isn't as good at doing, um, to drive more more value, it's really an exciting thing. It does take a lot of work, though, and I think that's probably one of the things that you're focused on with all the transformations that, that you're leading here, you know, at IBM. Where do you see and how fast do you see this moving? Because, like I said, there is this kind of, you know, there's the one narrative that's like, this is going to make everything better. We're going to get twenty trillion dollars of productivity. We're going to get massive gains societally. And then there's the other school that's like, none of this stuff works as, as well as it should. Too much security vulnerability. Um, you know, companies aren't getting the value they're saying. Like, I imagine you're more in the former camp than the latter camp, but how do you kind of navigate that? Because your customers are probably asking that same question before they're writing big checks and putting big efforts behind this. Well, I think that 
there are a lot of use cases that we see our clients starting out with and really driving outcomes for um, their bottom line. If you look at in the customer care space, even in the example that we talked about with the US Open app, providing very hyper-personalized experiences to end users is a really good use case where we see a number of our clients using agentic experiences. Even in the app with the things that we talked about with match insights, with match chat, you are using agentic behaviors underneath yeah. the covers. So the customer insights is one where we see clients using that um, very, very rapidly and is one where we see a lot of agentic behaviors being used in the implementations. Uh, when you think about AI productivity, the use cases I talked to you about in terms of what it means to start applying agentic to things like your backend systems of your CRM systems, your ERP systems, and how you automate workflows around them. We actually see a number of clients doing that today and using agentic and this spectrum of agentic and deterministic together to be able to mitigate a lot of the risk that you're talking about. And the last area is in IT, whether it be for the software development lifecycle or whether it be for optimization of your IT infrastructure. These are the three that we primarily see organizations starting to use in production already. Yeah, and I like that you mentioned that because there's, uh, you guys have been very acquisitive. IBM is one of those companies that's constantly acquiring things. Um, sometimes they're, they're big name companies that people know, sometimes like Red Hat kind of size deals. And sometimes, you know, they're, they're more tuck-ins that really add. I think you've got something that was really interesting, uh, you you know, data stacks. We acquired data stacks um, recently, Which yes. was a really interesting one because we know that for AI to meet its potential and for software to sort of be redefined, I keep saying the software industrial complex will be redefined yes. in the era of AI. Um, we will be com consuming it differently, making the unstructured data highly accessible to your AI is really what the enterprise is going to be able to extrapolate the most value. Because we've been able to do kind of smart stuff with, with tables and and columns and databases for a long time. But what happens when all the really great data, the stuff that's in our meetings, the stuff that's you know in this video right here that might have value for somebody, um, it's hard, it's been hard to extrapolate that and use that. Data Stacks is part of that solution. Talk a little bit about why you made that deal and how it really solves that AI unstructured data challenge for IBM and Watson. Data Stacks um, is a company that has been founded in data for since its inception with Cassandra. But beyond that, they are a generative AI company with the acquisition of what they did of Langflow, um, which just now achieved over 100,000 GitHub stars uh, for those that don't know for what they do in the Gen AI space um, and how they're really helping our clients unlock this 90% of unstructured data that sits in the yeah. organization. This is really where a lot of the value is. If you look at it, less than 1% of an enterprise's data is encapsulated in today's um, frontier models or foundation models that they have. The real value for enterprises is gonna be when they can take data in their organization, not just the structured data, but that 90% of unstructured, yep. and really unlock that with generative AI. And that means that you need to be able to have access to all of your data. You need to be able to have it in a way in which you can understand yep. it. You need to be able to have policy and security enforcement and as you do that, you need to be able to have the best accuracy possible, which is what we're doing. And that technology that we're leveraging from data stacks to be the foundation of what we're doing in Watson X to unlock this unstructured data. Yeah, I love that 1% of data has touched AI and the enterprise. Uh, that's kind of the way Arvin has yes. really presents it. But it just makes me realize when we sort of try to make it sound like AI is, 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 is this is a bubble, this is late. It's like, this is barely started. And if you think about the enterprise part, we are in like the, we're not even in the first inning. We're like pre-game warm-ups or we're just whacking the ball back and forth, you might say in a, in a, you know, a tennis, we're playing the amateur game. We got so much more development, so much more opportunity. It's really exciting. And by the way, in this US Open thing you're doing, I mean, what I do love about it is this is an implemented, displayable use case. So yes, while maybe the opportunity in sports versus the bigger enterprise opportunity is small, they're, they're, they're totally leaning into this. They're leaning into it, they're making it real, they're, they're delivering it to consumers, and they're bringing value back to USTA, That's to the US right. Open. And by the way, I heard their customer or you know attendee growth has been just monumental. So I gotta end it with, with, with this, uh, Ritika. Who wins? Who is gonna win Ooh. the US Open? Who's gonna win the men's? Who's going to win the women's? And if you have enough depth, who's going to win uh, either of the doubles? Uh, I don't know if you know those. Well, so. I'm uh, so 
So I'll, I'll start with the doubles. I know you're a fan. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. So for doubles, it would be Townsend uh, and Sinequoia. Like, I think they're, okay. they're amazing. Uh, for singles, I think actually all four that are now in the semifinals are amazing tennis players. Sabalenka, um, Pagula. We have two Americans in there with Pagula and Anisimova. So for me, I actually think the women's, it's a toss-up, but it, I'm excited to see two Americans that are actually in uh, the, the semifinals. Um, okay. On the record. On the record. Winner. The winner? I would say Sabalenka. Okay. And the men? <laughs> the men? Between Alcarez and Sinner. Always, it seems. So it's going to be between one of them. But who are you picking? Alcarez. Alcarez. Although, um, it was interesting because uh, I think the other night, one of the players called um, Sinner an AI player, an AI tennis player. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Then maybe he's the one that IBM has to get behind. That's but, right. But in all seriousness, it should be a great end. Great it event. should be a great weekend end. Super excited and exciting to be here with you at Madison Always Square Park. Always a pleasure to event. talk to you, Dan. Great pleasure. Let's do it again soon. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for being part of this 6-5 on the road. We're here at Madison Square Park for this U.S. Open IBM activation. That was a great conversation, not just about tennis sports in the U.S. Open, but really about the future of enterprise AI. Hit subscribe. Join us for all of our other content here on the 6-5. We appreciate you being part of our community. I got to go for now, though. We'll see you all later. Oh, <laughs>